Unfortunately, he passed away. He wasn't able to finish it. So what they did, the album, I think it was about 14 songs deep. And overall, I thought it was pretty dope. It doesn't really get a lot of mention, but they had some, they had some dope moments up there, so I want to talk about them. Now, the first song, which is the intro, is called First Power. And it was, it was, it would kind of creep a lot of people up because he was talking like he was talking to like talking to Satan, talking about pushing me along, and a lot of people were thinking that he was worshiping Satan. I mean, I've heard from interviews that Easy E experimented a lot with witchcraft and the Ouija boards and stuff like that. I remember Doc Doc was talking some about that, but. A lot of people also say that Eric would just happen to be a fan of horror movies. And he would love, he loved shot value. He knew shot value was going to draw interest. And that's what really been moving the Ruthless label for the last um, 10 years before he passed. And what people don't know is that Easy e also did the voiceover for those like those demonic intros. Like you hear on the Bone Thugs and Harmony album for Creeping on the Come Up. And then DJ Unique, he took that over from there. So, what I like about how Easy does his projects is he sequences the albums perfectly. Like one song flows to the next. That one song there called Some Old Ish, where he was introducing the new Luke Ruthless label mates. Drace that had one of the hardest verses I ever heard. I hope I'm in the casket face down so all you motherfuckers could kiss my black ass now. And fuck all the crying all night. Just already done a rid of this fucked up life. Yeah. Oh my god. Then you had Silky Fine. Big shout out to her. She was up there. Then you had BG Knockout up there. Easy had a crew. He had a new crew of spitters. Dirty Red. Then Easy, he was going at Dre on that on that song. Then you went to, um, what's the name of that song? Sorry, Louie. Sorry, Louie was crazy. That's one of the craziest songs he ever did. Just by production value and just by the content where he would talk bash your head in with the Louisville Slugger. Then he had the first, I think the album had only one single and that was, just to let you know. And that was done after he passed away. That was pretty dope. Now, the motherfucking real was supposed to be in the NWA reunion song, actually. That was supposed to be the NWA reunion song. That was probably the last song Easy ever recorded before he got sick. And it was dope. It was very dope. It was very dope. And it showed that they still had chemistry. It was... It was missing Dre and Cube, but you know Cube would have jumped on it anyway because, you know, they squashed that beef at the tunnel that time. But some of the songs up there, they could have just left off like Nuts on Your Chin, Hit the Hooker, and Baby Mama. It kind of played on Easy's weaknesses because, you know, t depending on the beat and depending on the tempo, he had kind of problems riding fast beats up-tempo beats, because he's not really a rapper. He's more so better at riding smooth, dark-layered beats. And that's what the next two songs did, with Creeping and I Crawl, which was the hardest song on the album. When he's rapping at that pace, and that storytelling pace, that's where he excels. Because when he's rapping over up-tempo beats like you hear on Nuts on Your Chin and Hit the Hooker, some of that naughty by nature stuff, it don't sound right with him. But then he went at What Would You Do? He was one of the few that was going at Suge Knight. Where all these niggas were scared of Suge. Take out Suge and stop down the road. Since Dre is a bitch, pimp slap that hoe. He went at the whole dog pound. He ain't even care. Diggity diggity dad, don't fire. Smoke your ass. Now corrupt. Don't even set trip. Yellow Long Beach, Buff Peak, Bam Now Puppy Dog Crip, really dope. Got my nuts on your chin while I'm all in your Philly hole. The way he was rapping, it was hard. Got my 
Got my nine mil killer, hundred dollar ain't snoop. You can run, but you nigga, but you can't hide. Easy E stay creeping on the east side. But you know what? I think originally he used the murder was the case beat, but through the sample clearances he couldn't use it. You could probably find that on YouTube. Then it followed up with Gangsta Beat for the Street, which was one of my favorite songs there. It was very smooth. It showcased the whole new ruthless posse that he brought. He brought. I think it was um, Bitches With Problems and BG Knockout and Dre Stood and all them and Dirty Red. They held down this album. They really did. Easy had an eye for superstar talent. I couldn't imagine had he had Bone up there. But overall, I thought the album was good. But see, what people got to realize that it, it was so many projects coming out around that time that it got lost in the shuffle. And plus, the ruthless momentum got hit to a screeching halt. Because that's easy e That's the captain of the ship. When that go down, it ain't nothing but going, but it ain't nothing but down from there. But luckily, Bone had enough juice on their star power. They carried the brand for the next five years. But overall, I like the project. I think if Easy was alive, it would have been put together a lot better. Cause he would have been more in point with it. It's just like I think they just took songs and they try to mesh it up the best way they could. To honor his memory. But overall, I thought it was a dope album. So, let me know what you guys think of it. Subscribe. Hit the like button. I'm gone.